Thank you very much for, for the invitation to participate in the 7th St. Petersburg International Oncology Forum, White Nights 2021. I am Dr. Jorge Contreras, current president of the Spanish Society for Radiation Oncology, CEOR. Um, I work in, in the Hospital Regional of Malaga in the south of Spain and also in Genesis Care, Spain. This, these are my personal disclosures. Uh, first, uh, I have to say that I'm going to, to give my presentation in a, in a champion's scenario, and this is not so, so easy. I have also to say that I am from the, from the south of Spain, so, so I am passionate and I am of a Latin origin. And I really do love my work. I really like what I do day by day and also much of what you are going to to hear from my presentation are personal opinions so you you don't have to to agree a hundred percent with them this is uh, the main aspects or these are the main aspects aspects that i am going to to review today with my presentation i i'll try to to do the review of all of these aspects. First, I, I will describe the, the basic concepts of the immune response, especially related with the with the clinical immunoray therapy landscape, and how to enhance the ascopal effects with radiotherapy drugs, and with a special, in general, very unknown treatment called hypertemia. And I will finish leaving you some take-home messages. To start, uh, in this slide, we, we can see how cancer is approached by uh, the classical combination of treatment. That's, these are surgery, chemo, and radiotherapy. Nevertheless, immunotherapy has emerged as an innovative uh, therapy in order to treat cancer patients. It is for this that we are assisting to a promising era in cancer, in cancer treatment Immunotherapy has gone through an unprecedented development through the last years. Uh, the overall picture of cancer immunotherapy is extremely optimistic since translation, translational and clinical research are progressing fast as well. As you may observe uh, in this slide, during the last uh, 10 years, there have been more than 20 approvals in different indications for, for immunotherapy agents. We have observed astonishing changes in terms of disease-free survival in pathologies such as melanoma and renal cancer, in which years ago, no treatment seems uh, to be effective, but there is uh, still uh, room for, for improvement. But one of the main criticisms uh, that immunotherapy receives is that only a small percentage of patients so show a real benefit when are exposed to immune agents. Thus, one of the main challenges is to detect and select those patients that could bene benefit from these therapies and how, the, for example, the radiotherapy therapy could uh, help in this, in this objective. But in order, in order to, to understand all of this, uh, we have to ask us, what do we need to have an immune response in the human body? And the answer is simple. Basically, we need two factors. One is the cancer cell, of course, the antigen, and the other is the T cell. But of course, things are not so easy in, in a real world. The, the immune response is a little bit more complicated and we need also lymph nodes and a tumor microenvironment where it can be expressed different pathways in the immune response that can be activated or inhibited as the PDL1 or CTLA, CTLA4. And these pathways regulate the interaction between the tumor cells and the antigens and the T cells. This classical slide, we can see the different steps needed to get an immune activation, beginning from the release of cancer cells antigens, cancer antigens presentation by the, by the dendritic cells, 
priming and activation of the T cells in the lymph nodes by the APCs, following by the trafficking of T cells to the tumor and the recognition and infiltration of the cancer cells by the T cells, killing them. This is what we call the cancer immune response cycle. Uh, speaking about radiotherapy, it's well known that radiotherapy has direct effects on DNA damage, altering the phenotype of tumor cells. Besides this, the effects of radiotherapy may also be detected in no irradiated cells that are in the vicinity of irradiated cells. Ionizing radiation can elicit an activated phenotype as, uh, in some cells promotes rapid and persistent remodeling of the extracellular matrix through the induction of proteases and growth factors, as well as chronic production of reactive oxygen species. But, and this is the most important slide in my presentation, uh, the most important factors related with the radioimmunotherapy response depends on the amount of dose of radiotherapy given per fraction the size of the volume that we treat it or we radiate, and the time when we use it. For example, when we give small doses of radiotherapy per fraction to tumor cells with a usual uh, result of killing them are by a mechanism called apoptosis. The cell breaks apart into several apoptotic bodies, which are then phagocytosis, but without inflammation. But when we give high doses of radiotherapy, when we use when we use high dose per fraction, for example, using SBRT, the cells die by a mechanism of necrosis, with explosion of the plasma membrane by a sudden rupture with a nuclear lysis that causes a strong inflammation, and this enhances the immune response against the tumor. This is what we call the vaccine effect of radiotherapy. And this vaccine effect of radiotherapy convert cold tumors that are not responsive to immunotherapy into hot ones, more responsible to immunity. In this slide, you, you have the list of the more than 26 approved immune oncology agents with the companies of, of origin and the targets that are used. But although there are plenty of clinical trials ongoing combining radiotherapy with the different immune checkpoints, we st still do not have many of them with reported and tested results that could establish establish clinic, re, clinical recommendations of how to combine radiotherapy with immunotherapy and when, with what, and what a specific drug. Here we have the rationale of combining both treatment, especially of SBRT, as we have said, with immunotherapy. Radiotherapy allow for an increased response of the immune system by a positive modification of the microenvironment. The combination increases local and, and distant uh, tumor response compared with SPRT alone, with a higher CD8 tumor infiltration, PDL1 expression, and mutational load that could be predictive as size. SBRT must be administered during checkpoint inhibitors inhibitors treatment because it has been tested that there is no increase in toxicity for combining both um, techniques. And although distant non-targeted effects of radiotherapy, what we call as copal effect, are clinical rare, but it is increased when immunotherapy is used. Here I want to present you an example where you can see how a patient with a melanoma presented a response into uh, in the irradiated pelvic lesion, but more interesting in the no irradiated hepatic and suprarenal lesions in combination with ipilimumab. Here you have another example. In this case, a 61 years old male with chemo refractory metastatic non small cell lung cancer with multiple mediastinal lymph nodes and supraclavicular lymph nodes. He was enrolled 
on a prospective trial of concur concurrent radiotherapy and impililumab and treated with ASBRT. In this case, the, uh, this was treated with 30 grays in five consecutive fractions to the right ileum. The left picture represents the treatment plan in CT. The PET images on the right were taken before, upper, before in the upper slide and after the del delivery of concurrent radiotherapy and ipilirumab, three milligram per kilogram infused every three weeks for a total of four infusions. All hypermetabolic hyper lesions seen on the past pretreatment pit CT demonstrated a complete response to treatment. A phase two study evaluating this, this regime in non-small cell, cell lung cancer has confirmed the activity of combination in a disease that was not responsive to anti-CTLA for alone. There are also a sample of enhancing the ascopal effect with the combination of anti pdl one and radiotherapy as described in this recent publication by Dr. Tromer. And now I would like to, to stop only two minutes to present you another very unknown way of enhancing the immune system response by using a technique called hyperthermia. As Professor Mark Hurwick, Director of the Radiation Oncology Department in the Thomas Jefferson University in Philadelphia, describes in his publication as a clinical opportunity. But what is hyperthermia? <clears throat> Hypertermic oncology is another interesting field of development in oncology and immunology. And it is defined as the procedure to heat up tumors up to 39 to 43 degrees. This is what we call mild hypertermia, not, not ablative, that produce a modification of the energetic state of the molecules with non-ionizing radiation to boost the effect of radiotherapy and or chemotherapy and enhance the immune response. There are different biological effects of local hyperthermia in the tumor as described in this slide. First, where mm, we see A, hyperthermia alters physiology of the centrally located tumor by affecting <clears throat> its, its vasculature. The increase of the blood flow and vessel permeability is enormous. B, heat causes proteins to unfold and increases the intracellular amount of protein chaperoning that are named heat shot proteins. C, temperatures exceeding 37, 37 degrees result in an increased cell membrane fluidity, thereby influencing their permeability. A specific biological effects of heat on membranes may be, far, may be further affected by altering properties of membrane-bound proteins. D, local heat helps to activate the immune system and causes it to attack the tumor directly, but might also cause, cause a systemic effect by which immune cells attack tumor cells distant from the heated tumor, very similar to the ascopal effect in radiotherapy. Um, e, Hyperthermia affects DNA damage repair pathways by disactivating specific repair proteins, and this produces an enhance in the response of the treatment uh, with chemotherapy or radiotherapy. And this is what uh, Professor Horwitz called augmenting immunity, a new paradigm for hyperthermia, because with partial tumor therapy is enough, it has a favorable toxicity profile. It is possible the protected repeated use combined with anti pd one anti-CTLA-4. As, as presented before, it has multifactorial immune effects, and it also could, could reduce the need of treatment time. For example, in the treatment in melanoma, helminth tumors, bladder, lung, etc. Are there questions to be addressed? Many questions. But uh, we think that we have we should work in the uh, research of this uh, combi combination of hyperthermia with uh, the immune agents. 
And if we come back to the cancer immunity cycle, <clears throat> we could expect an enhance of the immune response using hyperthermia in at least three steps of the immune cycle shown in the slide. I want <clears throat> to finish my, my presentation and I want to leave you some take home messages very similar to those that Dr. Silvia Formenti and Dr. Sandra Di Maria have asserted in their recently publication in the Red Journal. And the first mes uh, message is that I want to leave is that the combination of radioimmunotherapy has a great future in oncology treatment. Because as we have said, radiotherapy induces an immune cell death. T cells are required for obtaining a better response of radiotherapy. Ongoing clinical trials may will help us to elucidate which timing sequence and dosing regimes are more optimal, but we already know know that SBRT is the best technique of radiotherapy for enhance, enhancing the immune response and must be administered during the checkpoint inhibitors treatment because no increase in toxicity is expected for combining with immunotherapy approaches. Therefore, radiotherapy may be considered as an adjuvant tool in order to enhance immunological response. But it is clear that we have to continue to continue doing clinical research in this area because we still don't know exactly which irradiation irradiation dose or fraction schedules are better in order to provoke an optimal immune response. It has been reported in preclinical research that hyperfraction and smaller treatment fields enhance immune response. Also, we don't know if there is a proper, sequ a proper sequencing order of radiation and immunotherapy to achieve a better outcome. But now, what we already know is that it is better to use concurrent radiotherapy with immunotherapy or immediately after. In addition, we don't know if the metastases chosen to be radiated have a different effect based on their lo location but now we have observed that abscopal responses have mainly resulted from radiotherapy directed to visceral metastasis. We also have to be aware of negative results that will have been published, although given the design of those trials, which may not be the most accurate, for this reason it is difficult to obtain solid conclusions. So we can say to conclude that now it is time for radioimmunotherapy, as we have published recently in clinical and transnational oncology. And again, thank you very much uh, to the organizers for in having me here today in this excellent meeting. And I look forward to meet you in person in September in Paris uh, in the fifth edition of the International Conference of on immunotherapy, radiotherapy combinations called immunorats. Take care.